How is everyone today? Hopefully you're doing great. Um, I know it's it's good here in my corner of the world. As we're waiting for people to, to come in, there's a couple things that, um, housekeeping ideas that I want to um, share with you and talk just a little bit about. Some questions have come to me in regards to the um, triple triangle. So I want to take a minute and have you look at this. Um, I did a little rough drawing on a piece of paper here. And so again, that triple triangle block that you're seeing quite often in the midst of what we're doing here with the quilt looks like this on this side. And I call it triple triangle because there's one, two, three triangles in here. And so um, my measurement on this square is one and um, a half inch unfinished. It's one inch when you would get it, excuse me, one inch when you would get it in there. So to get that triangle again, I take that one and a half inch unfinished square and I add one inch to it. And so now I have the, the length of this is now two and a half inches, all right, because I've added that extra um, inch to it. I don't add anything um, in this direction. And so I make two of those units and put them together, um, keeping the, the, the larger square, whatever fabric this is that you're going to use, is on this side and you add that, um, that extra fabric um, one inch on either side of that. So um, once you do that in this square, can be anything. It doesn't have to be a solid block. It can be a, it can be a half square triangle. It can be a, um, a quarter square, you know, quarter square. It can be anything that you want it to be in that square. You just know that you're adding an inch um, to that at with a you know your background fabric. So that's that's how I operate on that. So hopefully that's cleared a little bit of that up um, for you this morning. I, you know, and uh, so as Linda coming from across the country, good morning, and Florida too. So North Carolina and Florida's um, with this a um, little bit later for you guys. So um, today we're going to work with pinwheels. And pinwheels are a lot of fun, and you can get a lot of beautiful quilts um, from different ways that you put pinwheels together. But the, the key to a pinwheel is that center. And as I, I want to hold this up a little bit so you can kind of see it, when we get to that center, we want all of those um, points to match in there. And... Uh, Oh my goodness, Pauline is here from Australia. That's a that's a long way away. We got a lot of people from the East Coast. So welcome to all of you and glad you're here. And so I want to concentrate a little bit today on how to get those points to come together because what I notice in a pinwheel quilt is when those pinwheels don't match in that center point, then what I notice it. it, it my eye goes to that, um, that discrepancy in the center. So we're gonna talk a little bit about maybe what we can do to, to alleviate some of that in our, in our work and in our blocks. What I have decided to do is I use two different fabrics. I um, a, a little bit deeper, a little bit lighter, and then I changed up the center block a little bit. So my star fabric is going to be in the upper left and the bottom right, and this these little circles in um, in this particular fabric is a little bit lighter, but it's going to be in the top right and the lower left. So I'm going to go opposite with that. You certainly could make them all four different, all four the same, um, with the center the same. However you um, choose to do that is great. But I chose to go opposite so that I could use my paper. This is the um, 
star single paper from spinning star design and you know i love it it's the paper that for me i get the most accuracy with there was a comment um, also about the paper that i hope i can you know clear up um, a little bit and that is when you are sewing on the paper you really want to stay on that dotted line and as as much as you can and i usually start out a little bit slow until i get the feel of, of following the line um, then i can kind of speed race through here but when i get to my point i really do want to hit in the in the middle of that point so that when i start out I am I am really on that dotted line so I kind of speed race along slow down so that I can stop in the center of that circle pivot and then keep sewing the reason I take a little extra care on this and it doesn't matter what paper you might use or even with your pencil drawing if you're choosing to do your half square triangles individually the corners are where it comes together in that center piece and where you want that extra care to be taken because that's where you're going to get off if when you make a half square triangle you really want this to be a true quarter inch from the outside edge to here. And if you can pivot on there and keep on those lines, whether you draw them or whether you use a paper, um, I think is one of the key, key elements of making sure that those come together. So if you're oversizing and you are trimming these down, you really wanna make sure that when you put your ruler down, you get that right up against it so that 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 corner um, and I and I really don't have it I can see it on the camera more than I can see it with my with my eye and that's the other thing that I want to say um, when you are sitting down and cutting it makes a difference in how you see your your fabric um, and when I'm sitting here by myself without the camera on I look at my half square triangles and I really work at it because I can see that my ruler is not right on camera but down here it's perfectly fine and when I'm looking at it because it looks like I'm correct but I'm not so I go and take it to my cutting table and I stand because then you're looking straight down on it you're not looking at it at an angle so those kinds of things make a difference too and the other thing that when you're cutting off and, and with my single star I don't really have to trim down if I have followed the lines and if I have cut those right directly on those black lines, I get these wonderfully perfect half square triangles every single time. But when I stand and I go to my cutting, um, cutting table, then I can see, and I'm really looking at it now correctly, I can see that, and I can cut off that little point, and I know that I am right on, and my fingers, it's hard to hold this. Um, I can see that I'm right on the money with that. So I know that when I make my quarter inch seam, I'm going to hit it in all four places. So a couple of things you can a take away from that is, number one, when you are sewing those, it's helpful to stand and look straight down on your cutting uh, materials because when you are sitting and cutting and I know that some of us have to sit and we can't stand and do our cutting but just know that how your eye adjusts to that cutting so that you are getting the accuracy and what I find helpful when um, when I've worked with students who need to sit, they don't have a choice otherwise, that the spinning mat works really well. And they can spin it and see that they have the top where it needs to be and all the sides. And then they can make their cuts accurately. Um, but we see it at an angle when we're sitting. So that's another thing. You know, there's I've always said there's three places that I that I 
would say that we can mess up and that is number one is cutting number two is our quarter inch seam and our third is how we press it so I would like to at this point sew together four of these um, points and and I know that when I'm sitting here and trying to talk and do that I can't chew gum and walk um, sometimes it's it's tough for me to um, So the other thing that I I would recommend because I need to do it is I need to lay this out um, so that I can I can see the pinwheel before I pick it up and sew it. It's uh, it, it just makes it much easier for me to do. So I'm going to pick these two up, um, fold it over, and I have pressed these all to the dark side. Um, so that I can um, get everything lined up really well. And I want to come down here and make sure these two are very accurately in that corner. And I, you know, I know that there are, are many who don't always like to pin, but when I get to something like this where it's going to be really important for me to, to have those meet, I'm, I'm going to put a pin there and we're going to we're going to sew from this edge um, down through that on this particular one and the next one we will um, I'll show you I'm gonna flip it and so I'm using the edge of my foot as well as my mat that's right here and I can go right up to where that pin was and get that. And now I'm going to bring this one over. And as you can see, the seams are coming together at the top. And so here is where I want to make sure that they are definitely butted up against each other. And I'm going to drop that pin right in there so it holds it. And now I'm going to flip this around and sew not from where the seams come in because the machine can sometimes pull it to the left or to the right. And so I've pinned that, I flipped it over, and I am now going to sew this. And it's much easier to sew as I come in to that and keeping my hand over here holding um, holding the side of it so it doesn't it doesn't pull it to the left or to the right and I, I repeat those things because it's on these pinwheels where those little things um, and they don't have to take a lot of extra time because they are and now I want to go to the pressing part the first thing is I want to notice that those are meeting up directly and they you know right now they they look good so I'm excited about that and I'm going to press to the dark side um, and you might notice I'm using a, a little bit different iron today get the privilege of checking this out and there's a couple of things I really like about this iron um, and um, one is the side is has a kind of an edge on it so it really does when I, I tell you to press up against that seam it really presses up against there very nicely and I like that about it and I like that um, point on it um, up here as well and you'll see why in a, in a couple of seconds it's a little bit bigger than my dritz and so I'll probably because this mat is so small and my area is kind of small to work in. I'll probably continue to use that most of the time, but I love this little iron and what a great tool it would be to take on retreats and that type of thing. So now I have my pinwheel and I'm going to bring that over and here is where I'm going to again line it up and make sure that it's straight all the way across and I'm going to peek in there and make sure 
and I know that it's going to be hard for you to see on camera, but where the um, intersection of the two fabrics come, it's meeting up perfectly there in that center. And so I, I'm going to I'm going to drop a pin, and this time I'm just going to put it in straight instead of you know to the side because I just want to catch that edge, and making sure that both edges are where they need to be because I don't want to see my background fabric on the top and I don't want to see my top fabric on the back so I want to make sure that those get in there so let's go back to and so I'm gonna get that started and because there is some bulk here I just take that nice and slow so that I have, you know, tackled that and I want to make sure that I'm adjusted down here, especially if I don't pin those edges. I want to make sure that I am definitely adjusted to both of those. All right. And you know, my, my leaders and enders are kind of important. I don't get those bird nests and that extra, that extra stuff there. Whoops, excuse me, get the wrong um, camera going. All right, so now to alleviate some of that bulk that happens in the center of a pinwheel, I am going to give that a little twist and I put my fingers on, you know, the side. I don't get into the seam and I give that little bit of a twist and I have this this cute little pinwheel now in the center so bef when as I press it I'm going to just press that little seam there um, make sure that that's you know pressed a little bit uh, just I'm not really pressing pressing because I do that from the top and get that laid flat I can press that towards the, the red, I can press that, and now making sure everything is laying flat, I just want to flatten that, and again, you don't really want to press or, or move the iron, and here is where you get that everything comes together in the center, and you don't have to worry about getting those center pinwheels off. And as you, you know, so pinwheel to pinwheel or any block where, where things come together, um, you know, how you, how you press and how you sew and how you get it all pinned in there definitely makes a difference um, in the final outcome of your, of your block. So now, Here's going to be the block once I get that part sewn together and uh, the pinwheel. And now you're, you have cut a 10 and a half inch square that you are going to sew to this. And you've cut a 10 and a half by 20 and a half out of your red fabric, which will um, make this kind of a four patch, if you will, um, in a not quite a four patch, but more or less. And that's really all we need to do for this week. So if there's any catching up that you need to do, any extra work that that comes your way, that will be, this is the, you know, the week for you. Um, this would be, you know, the time for you to come together and do this. Um, I see um, Laverne has asked, would you consider using the three pin method for the center of the pinwheel? Um, yes and no. Uh, the, the three pin method works really well for, for many people. Um, the reason I don't necessarily always use it is every time you put a pin into the, um, you know, to that center, as you're pinning it and that center method or the three pin method is basically let me get one of these is basically this you would put your pin on this side and then you would finagle it so that it comes right out on the other side um, here and then you would take and you would pin on the right side 
and you pin on the left side. Now I have those three pins there and once you've pinned on both the right and the left side and holding it in place, you can either leave this here and, and let it guide your, your um, sewing machine into that or you can remove that third pin and um, leave it out. But what I see is, I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but I have, you know, there is a little valley now and there's a little hill on both sides. And as you're sewing and, and you come to those, many of the machines will move and kind of sew below or above that. And if I have taken my time to either use the paper or if I've drawn my lines to draw them well so that they go from corner to corner and sewn directly on them, I'm going to get it to match on both sides. And I peeked at it and and work across it and so the three pin method works great there is nothing wrong with it and if that's what you have learned and you are finding success with it use the three pin method i simply don't because i'm trying to alleviate as much of those um, little bulges that happen the more pins you put in the more you get that and but again if your quarter inch seam is maybe a little off Putting that, you know, that middle pin on this side right where they intersect and going to the other side and catching that one where they intersect and then making sure that you hit that right where the pin goes in, you're going to find yourself with a little bit more accuracy there. So, you know, different different people, different ways we, we tackle an issue or a problem, but it's a good question and thank you for that because there are, there are different ways to, to go about um, figuring out and making sure that you get um, you know you get the results that you want and that's that's pretty important to do that so thank you for um, that question I appreciate it and then so for next time we're going and before I talk about that sections one two and three we finished and everything except I haven't put that one vase on the bottom because I want to give it some time and the um, excuse me I just saw a question that I do need to answer on from Melissa so if you're in that if you see the chats coming up Melissa has a question that's an important one but sections one, two, and three get sewn together on their own. And then now the sections four, five, and six that we're in right now are gonna be sewn together. And then those two sections, those two um, will be sewn together at the end. So we're starting kind of a new section. So this is the sec first section of four, five, and six that we'll sew in next week, we'll do section five, and then we'll sew those together. And the, the question from Melissa was, do you have to be a star member to post a pic for this quilt? And the answer is no. Um, I don't think so. And I could be wrong and, and hopefully some, somebody will um, answer that if I am wrong. Barbara Black did a wonderful video uh, last week. Um, about how to post pictures and how to get to the forum when you go on the quilt show. So if you have not seen that, that was in the newsletter. And again, if you have not signed up for the newsletter for the quilt show, please go and do that because that's free and there's a lot of great information in there. And she does a, an excellent job of sharing with you how to post the pictures. So please go uh, to that. At, to the newsletter and watch Barbara's. It's also on YouTube, so you can go to YouTube and find The Quilt Show and find Barbara's video there as well, and then you can get your pictures up. And I would you know, love to have your questions and stuff answered in there. I, I look uh, several times a week at that to make sure that I'm answering questions that you can and a lot of the tech questions I know Barbara answers she's kind of doing a little bit more of, of that too 
um, to do that. But to post the pictures, you do have to be a free member. So do sign up for the the free portion of the um, the quilt show, and it's thequiltshow.com, and that. Um, that will be really helpful to you. And ask your questions there, put up your pictures, um, share information or techniques that you have because I know that you know each of us learn a little bit differently and we come at things from a different from a different place. And I've really appreciated some of the comments and things that people have put up and learned a few things myself. So please please make sure you do that. And then next week we are going to be doing the applique section. Actually, um, next week we have, I believe, let me grab my paper so I'm not telling you any. No, next week we're going to be doing pieced blocks, so I will have some information for you on that. And we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the bird, and um, because I, I promised that towards the end. And we have the, um, we have the vase next week and we have the bird that we're going to put on this section and then then we go to section five which is only piece blocks and so for next week you have we'll we'll be doing some more applique and i know there's been some questions about the backing and things and we'll get to all of that and answer those questions about what the pattern says on backing and go with what you already know if you're already that far ahead because I, I've seen some of the pictures posted on the forum of finished quilt tops and they're, they're absolutely beautiful and stunning. So thank you for putting them up. Uh, thank you for asking the, the questions and we will see you next week with a little bit more applique and uh, getting that bird accomplished. So we'll see you then.